everybody. Thank you for listening. This is Dave, and I am joined here with Joshua. The one and only. The one and only. My podcast, Dave. This is Joshua, and I'm hanging out with Dave today. Uh, Brandon couldn't make it. Welcome to PVD Horror. Welcome, welcome. So uh, before we dig into our interview today, which is with Andrew Ford, the uh, director or the filmmaker of The Reenactment, which also stars Tony Todd, uh, we wanted to just kind of go over a few things that we've, uh, we've been doing lately. So Josh, do you want to start off with uh, chatting a little bit about the uh, Friday the 13th event that we just recently had? Uh, yeah, super cool event. Uh, we played Jason Takes Manhattan, filled the place up, um had even had some trauma people come down and um chris mckibbins came down he's got the uh oh my god he's gonna hate me the spooky uh picture show uh podcast and that's pretty cool um and then mind asylum designs had a table uh buttonwoods and origin the beer companies that's where we host our monthly events if you haven't been to one in your local you should probably come uh super cool time yeah, so like, like Josh was saying, Buttonwoods Brewery is where we've we hold them, and uh, Origin Beer Project uh, shares a space in there, and they're just super great hosts. I mean, they really kind of you know let us yeah. set up and take over for a night, you know, every month. So it's a pretty cool experience, and the community is really cool. Like everyone was jumping around and hooting and hollering, and um, yeah. it's really fun environment. And and that event itself. Like when what's his name got his head knocked off by Jason the plow <laughs> the place just erupted erupted uh so that was that was super awesome yeah. so, so Josh I know that um, Jason takes Manhattan is uh, one of if not Brandon's favorite installment to the franchise I actually don't and I I, I enjoy it as well it's not my favorite but it's definitely one that I enjoy I actually don't know your opinion on this film it was all right. <laughs> it was all right <laughs> well there was some stuff that was really awesome you know i like the idea of jason being out of uh crystal lake which was cool uh i wish he had killed more people like i wish he had just walked down the street and like off with their head kind of thing um and then there was that stuff with the little kid through the whole thing like she resurrected him as a child or and he stayed a child in her mind i, I don't know he's a little kid through the whole thing and i thought that was not really necessary uh but it added to the story and made for some cool scenes so but not my favorite i wanted jason x and <laughs> I, only one other person wanted jason x uh, that i mean that will definitely have to be one that we we do for one of the future friday the 13th book. that it's gonna make its way in there um i did like the end with like the toxics uh stuff like slime but seeing like jason it, like it's it's almost so bad that you got to love it. Like the way he looks at the yeah, end. Man. Yeah. And um, you know what? It was a shout out to Michael Myers. Um, when he got uh, stabbed in the eye, um, when he was doing the, Oh yeah. The, the scene with Jason at the end of that, he's doing the same thing and he's going, yeah. Yeah. and uh, not a lot of people caught that, but it's a homage to that movie. Uh, a homage. Homage. And that was Halloween two. That that happened if I remember correctly. Possibly, right? I can't remember. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Uh, so anyway. Yeah. Want to want to tell me about any uh, any new uh, movies you watched recently or any books? Yeah. Uh, so I did. Uh, so bad it's good. Uh, by the time this comes out, the post will be up. I watched Pan Man with my son. Wait, wait. Uh, Hand Man. Pan Pan, as in cooking Pan. 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 Oh, I heard about this film actually. I did hear about this film a while ago. Oh, dude, it's awesome. Um, it's about like this chef who was wronged and he, he turns into a demon and possesses people and they wear a big pot on their head and uh kill people. And but the guy who wears the pot, he fell in love with a girl, and the power of love conquered the demon, so as to speak. But it's it's super hokey and stupid. And I give the guy a lot of credit because he was walking around and fighting people with a giant pot on his head. <laughs> um, so that was that was pretty interesting to see. Um, he did walk into some things here and there that they left in. So that was pretty cool. 
Uh, but man, my my son was like, "This is the best worst movie ever." <laughs> this is the best worst movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I was like, "It's so bad, it's good, right?" And he was like, "I hate." Oh my god, it. love it all at the same time. You are molding your son into you. Yes. Oh, that's scary. Uh, so that was super cool. Um, and then I broke out the old. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. Sorority Sorority Slaughter is what you are holding. Yeah, Wave Productions way back, one of the first films that they made uh, when they did um, like legit film. I should say, I shouldn't say legit film, Uh, Mm -hmm. but they did. They actually had stories and stuff and it was really cool. Uh, This one in particular, the killer goes out and kills all these girls in a religious like way, kind of like Blood Feast. And at the end, he resurrects this goddess who takes over and that's that's her and that's the whole story but it's it, like i love movies made with a two dollar budget and it's got pamela or such um who hopefully we will be interviewing pamela such psycho and such sisters. yeah from psycho sisters my other favorite way of productions oh. film so josh uh, i had this movie. crazy thought the other day that I was actually going to ask you if I can re-borrow Psycho Sisters if we do end up getting the chance to talk to her. But also, yeah. I think I want to check out whatever that movie was you were just talking about. What was it? Slumber? Slaughter? Slumber? What was it? Was uh, it? It's Sorority Slaughter. <laughs> sorority Slaughter. Yeah. That one actually sounds sort of interesting. I would check Dude, that out. Uh, a lot of wave production stuff's really good. And, and by, by really good, I mean um, it's... It's like Pan Man, like you can't look away, and uh, you can't you know, reference a movie that people haven't seen with another movie people have not seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so bad it's good. Like, and uh, it's nostalgic too. And plus, I I watched these when I was a you know, twelve, thirteen, fourteen year old kid, so and you know, yeah, in the early nineties when they first started coming out and uh, got a mail order and all this and that. So uh, they they hold a little special place in my heart. And a lot of it's sexist, like, you know, it's drowning of girls, girls drowning in quicksand, girls getting shot with arrows, like wrestling around in a pool, like everything's a wet T-shirt. Um, it's so like over the top, gratuitously. Is it top- so sexist it's good? No, there's no such thing as that. <laughs> oh, um, all right. I was just going with the so bad is good theme, you know, like. It- when uh, Debbie Rashawn was on and she was like, there's a lot of. Yeah. grounding there and, and yeah, oh, yeah yeah and chlorophyll um it was like a fan thing so people would literally write to wave productions with some idea that they wanted to see oh my god dude would just make it it, it turned into a fetish a yes. fetish thing yeah yeah um so that's 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 why i say like this was when they were legit <laughs> so they started making movies and then they turned into a mail order like whatever you want will make so i want you to tie my gym shoes around her neck and put my dirty socks in her mouth (laughs) (laughs) fanboy love um so that's what i've been watching cool uh the finest cinema around yeah for sure josh sounds like you've been watching some bangers over there (laughs) (laughs) so what have you been watching um so I actually have done a little bit of a mixture of some like old and some new. So for new ones, I mean, and this is, I mean, I guess I'm going back a couple of weeks now. I watched the movie Fresh, which is uh, on Hulu. And Josh, have you heard anything about this one? No. Uh, I've heard about Fresh, but I haven't actually like seen or seen it yet. But okay. somebody told me about it. So yeah it's kind of i don't know anything about it it's it's actually really good um this girl ends up meeting this guy in the grocery store she's kind of looking you know she's in the beginning she's doing like you know the dating app or whatever and you can tell she's bored meets a guy kind of seems too good to be true uh yeah guess what it's too good to be true but it takes some really disturbing um turns and when i say disturbing probably not too disturbing to you or I because of our history with the uh, with some of these films that we like to watch but to the general population everybody's like whoa I can't believe they go there and stuff like that um, the actress everybody in the film is actually phenomenal though I, I think that's probably the best part of the film um, is 
just the performances are really strong. And it's, yeah, I guess it is pretty disturbing. I'm not going to tell too much about it because it's kind of like spoiler territory. So, um, spoiler alert. Yeah. I rewatched um, Mother's Day, the, mm -hmm. Char the Charlie Kaufman trauma film. That's awesome. That, yeah. And I, wa I watched the uh, Joe Bob version from season three of Joe Bob, which is great because they have Eli Roth as a guest on there. And, um, that's one of his favorite films and pretty influential in, you know, the making of some of his films like Hostel and stuff. What a fun film. I've seen it before, but like rewatching it again was like, you know, because Mother's Day just passed. It was, I was trying to catch up on some of those films. And I, I really, really do enjoy that film. It is like hokey and fun, but also sort of disturbing. And uh, yeah, just like one of those movies, if I want to like sit back and watch something totally 80s that I don't have to put too much thought into that's it's perfect um the, the last uh, one I'll, I'll mention is Inferno have you which you've seen I'm sure Green Inferno no just Inferno uh it sounds familiar you'd have yeah, to run um Argento you watch the one. Oh yeah okay oh uh, is that the 80s Inferno yeah yep. okay so you know I was trying to um because I realized I never actually watched the trilogy. So it's, what is it? Inferno, Suspiria, and Mother of Tears, I think is the third one. No, I've never seen the third one then. Yeah. Inferno so is, is good. Suspiria is obviously classic. Mothers of, Mother of Tears, I haven't seen in years and don't remember enjoying it, but I would have to rewatch it. Um, I did like Inferno. It is just exactly what you expect from one of an Argento like Giallo film. Uh, the the acting is exactly how you expect it. The the dubbing, kind of the scenes that don't really always make sense, but um, just a lot of crazy visuals. I love the lighting in those films, like that. A lot of blue and pink fluorescent lighting on everything. It just yeah, I I really dig those films. Um, it kind of got me re-energized to go back and check out more Argento, more Fulci and stuff like that. So that's kind of probably next time we, we chat, I'll have bu watched a bunch of Fulci films. Going well, well, back to the uh, Italian stuff, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I just had this like urge after I watched Inferno the other day, I was like, oh yeah, I got to dig back in. I've been wearing my Fulci shirt like crazy lately and just like, I just dive in, you know? There was a, uh, there was another thing I watched, uh, Meat is Murder on Troma Now. And that's from my buddy, James. Uh, he's on Totally Tune Year Later, that podcast. Okay. He, he worked on Curse of the Weird Deer with me. He was the sound guy. And uh, he does the sound guy for all of Fantasy Shed, uh, all their podcasts. Mm -hmm. uh, super cool guy. He made me his murder. And it's a short film. And it's like okay. a trailer. But it's super hysterical. And it's about a guy who kills vegans. Dude, it's hysterical. That's on Troma now? Yeah. I'll get yeah, it's only five minutes or something, but yeah. oh, it's it's great. Yeah, um, Troma now has a has a good collection of like short little films that you can like watch. You can kind of just like, you know, watch everyone. a bunch of those at once. I like that. Yeah, uh, talking of Troma uh, today, I found out some bootlegger made a Curse of the Weird Deer um, action figure, and uh -huh. it was Nadia White, the star, and. Um, yeah, yeah, there was a big to do about that uh, today. Are so, they not happy, or is it? Uh, cool. Well, it's really funny. A lot of the people that worked on the on the movie were like, "Hey, where's my character?" Like, and they a lot of us were like, "Hey, I want to buy one." Like, yeah. dude, even if it's a bootleg, like it's still cool. Um, Naughty White put up a post about it. I did not sign off on this, so party party over for them and then yep. you know once trauma finds out i'm sure it'll be cease and desist wow. you know yeah. like it's all intellectual property and stuff plus mm -hmm. like how did they even know the movie yeah like it's gotta be someone I mean? on the inside that's what we were thinking but everybody in the group chat so i'm in the curse of the weird Deer group chat for all that don't know um and we still keep in contact and uh everyone's super cool but no one's owning up to that bad boy <laughs> <laughs> and uh it's in england and the only one that uh was in england was liam uh from my bloody banjo so it wasn't him so he was the only english guy that worked on the film so nice um yeah 
Do you want to tell them about upcoming events? Yeah. So, I mean, our, our first thing that we're going to uh, announce is Josh looks <laughs> way too close to the camera and freaks me out. Um, <laughs> The first thing is uh, next Friday, or I don't know when exactly in relation to when you guys will be listening 27th. to this, but May 27th, we will be uh, presenting Lloyd Kaufman and hashtag the film hashtag Shakespeare Shitstorm at the Columbus Theater in Providence. It is at 8 p.m. on that Friday. Tickets available at the Columbus Theater's website. And we are just fanboying out because we're going to have our opportunity to spend a little time with Lloyd Kaufman. And that is yeah. amazing. I, 10, 15, so however many years ago, I would never have believed that this would be true when I was like delving deep and heavy into trauma. Um, this is such a great experience that we are going to embark on. So I'm really excited. Yeah. Talk about like being blessed and lucky. You know what I mean? Um, Lloyd is very blessed and lucky to have us presenting your right. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we get to set up a table, but we sold all our merch at the Friday the 13th. Friday. I don't, yeah, I'm so, like, I don't even care. I just want to meet him. Yeah, I don't even care really something. either. I just want to go. Um, yeah. Ask him and, questions. Uh, I, did, I also did my brother's Banshee Fest, which was the day after Friday the 13th, Saturday the 14th. Dun, dun, yeah. dun. And uh, that, that was a bomb. Um, no one really showed up. I think it was like 10 people. Uh, but it was super cool to talk to everybody who is in the paranormal. Uh, Rhode Island has a huge paranormal thing. Um, all the groups, uh, even TAPS was here. So oh, that's sweet. Yeah, they were in Warwick, Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. um, the whole time they were on sci fi. Yep. So Rhode Island has a really rich history of paranormal and paranormal investigators, um, the New England paranormal whatever like bigfoot uh par like there's so many different groups that have come out of rhode island and moved around or whatever so the johnson brothers were there and tom degostino was there and um a bunch of other people so it was yeah. really cool to see tom, tom degostino is actually you know for anyone who's listening that maybe isn't familiar with the name he, he is like just a wealth of knowledge about ghosts and rhode island folklore and new england folklore in general like any haunted Rhode Island book that you find or haunted New England, he either wrote it or had a part, like some part in the writing of that book. He is the go-to person when it comes to anything haunted in our area. So that's, I was actually, when you told me he was going to be there, I was like, that's awesome. Cause he is like, that dude is just everywhere. When you talk about haunted New England. Um, and he's very well known. And I, so I'm a, I'm a fanboy for the Johnson brothers um they also did the conjuring house before uh i think they're the ones that got the um the husband and wife team in there yeah, they went yeah uh which is really cool and that man uh and keith johnson was next to me and i was like hi keith johnson how are you and i was like can you sign my book and i had forgot he already signed it so i made my wife get it from the house and bring it to the convention oh my god and it was already signed <laughs> But then his wife didn't sign it, and she was all over the book, too. And I was like, can you sign this, too, please? Yeah. He just he's, like, he's like, do you want me to just sign over my other signature? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Sure. Um, and Tom D'Agostino books, I got all his, but they're, they're stacked over there and over there and all over. So yeah. I couldn't get my wife to dig through the entire library to find them. Sure. Um, so. You should have probably pre-planned all that. Yeah, you know what's funny? Um, Aaron Beauregard was right next to me. And, you know, shout out to my brother. Um, we, you know, he's my brother. So, like, he, if we have an event, I usually try to pay for his table. And his event, he, you know, he was like, you paid for my table, I got yours. Um, so it was pretty cool. We didn't have to pay anything. Um, and it was really weird because a couple of our fans came. Like, one guy walked in, he's like, hey, you're the PVD hard guy. And I'm like, uh one of them yeah uh i'm the cool guy <laughs> then he's laughing he's like no you're not <laughs> <laughs> so i was like oh you really are a fan um oh you actually have listened <laughs> yeah you actually listened uh, yeah, he, and he, said, uh, he hasn't made it to any events because he has kids um yeah. but uh he he's like dude and i said one day we'll put on a kid event and that's that's in the future too but uh 
She said, cool. ditch those zeros and get with these heroes. Yeah. Uh, and then I was right next to Aaron Beauregard. So it was really funny. He was putting out books and I'm like, I don't have this. I don't have this. I don't have this. And I bought like, uh, he's like, dude, what are you doing? He's like, you don't, you, you don't need to buy all my stuff. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't actually have your books and I need them. <laughs> so yeah. Bought- yeah, Aaron is like this, a splatter punk genius. So oh, that's really cool time. that, you know, exactly. we have access to be able to chat with him and get access to his books. Dude, I got this new book, right? Uh, let's see where it is. And I fucking lost it already. Never mind, I lost it. I I have so many. I'm redoing the library, so I have books everywhere. And I I bought the Baker's dozen, the hardcover, and there was only like so many copies. I think it's right here. Nope. Um, but it's all right. Your visual books don't really translate to audio podcasts anyway. So yeah, but uh, <laughs> super cool. And uh, he's I we I was like, you know what? We should have just traded because he bought our merch and I bought his books. I was like, we should have just traded and like. Why even swap money? <laughs> He's like, good point. Um, so it was pretty cool. And yeah. uh, it was an interesting day, to say the least. But um, the next event, hashtag Shakespeare Shitstorm, I'm super excited about. So hopefully everyone shows up on the 27th there. Yeah, yeah. Um, we are we are definitely excited. And we are hoping that um, any local listeners will also join us there. Because it, it, you're going to get to meet them. And, you know, that's absolutely amazing. We got the chance to talk to him on this podcast, but like meeting him in person is going to be uh, a thousand times better. Uh, So Josh, we have uh, our interview that uh, we're going to get into shortly with Andrew Ford. Uh, He was the creator of the reenactment, which is kind of coming full circle because we had Tony Todd on to start season two, which has been like the never ending season of this podcast because we just keep doing interview after interview. Um, but now we're, now we're going to meet with, with Andrew. Um, but you also just actually met Andrew in person, which is not like super common for us because we kind of touch base with people all over the U S and other countries. Um, so do you want to kind of just briefly talk about that, how you met Andrew? Yeah. So, uh, we were, so he is, um, he was in Tennessee and Nashville the day we were shooting some jail scenes in curse of the weird deer. And I'm going to do a Curse of the Weird Deer episode, like the behind the scenes stuff, hopefully soon, Um, because some of the stories, people just, they don't know what goes on. Uh, It it was insane, like really insane. Um, But he was super cool. And uh, Josh um, and uh, Austin were two guys that I was working with steadily. And Josh was staying uh, right next to me in Ben, Ben Johnson's house. And he, we were talking about the reenactment and the more we talked about it, he was like, dude, he's coming. And I was like, Ooh, so he was like him and another guy came and they were like, hi. And they were like kind of nervous. And I was like, yo, what's up? And, uh, it was, it was really like, they were, they were very put off at first. They were like, Oh, okay. But then I was working. So I was running around like maniac and we didn't really get to talk because we were doing so much for the scenes. Um, and he only had like one scene. It was like a cameo shot, but it was super cool. Like it was super cool to meet him. Um, super funny guy. Like we had such a good time on set. Uh, when we did have downtime, it was cool. It was awesome. So without further ado, let's get him on. Uh, let's get Andrew Ford on right now. Let's do it. <laughs> Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in today. Uh, I have a buddy of mine from Curse of the Weird Deer, where we just happen to share a a nice little jail cell for a little bit. And also the director of the one, the only reenactment. Thank you, Andrew Ford, for coming on today. Well, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, Yeah, no, I'm I'm happy to be here. I was fortunate enough I got to meet Josh in, in the flesh, in person uh in nashville not too long ago so that was fun did you just say fortunate enough i think you're probably the only person to ever say it that way <laughs> I, I was actually gonna it's say been i'm recorded, sorry Dave. it's been recorded and and you're you, don't not know, a, yeah. you don't know the crowd that we were in i mean it's you know slim pickings <laughs> josh was one of the savory ones over there so that says something i guess so um, 
Yeah. Andrew, yeah, thanks for thanks for joining us. Andrew, I'm gonna make a uh, an assumption here. I'm gonna assume that you're a pretty big horror fan. I am a pretty pretty big horror fan, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, could you maybe share with us a little bit about what got you into horror? Uh, uh, what got me into horror? Um, I mean, I grew up uh, reading Goosebumps. Uh, I don't know if that dates me to a very specific. <laughs> same here. Same here. <laughs> so. I would, uh, I would literally, because uh, I grew up in South Carolina, and, and everybody kind of goes to church there. I don't know if it's the same uh, cool. in Providence. Stack of oh, goosebumps right behind me, homie. See, there we go. <laughs> Is that uh, Shocker on Shock Street? I remember. I remember when that one came out. That was a big deal. <laughs> Uh, um, uh, <laughs> I just learned to read like five years ago, so I'm slowly making my way through them. Yeah, um, yeah I used to uh, open up the hymnal. Uh, it was the only way my parents would get me to like stay still and like not make noise, I guess. And I'd read Goosebumps in the hymnal at oh, church. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so what type of horror do you generally like? Do you have like a specific genre or subgenre that you like? Um, I mean, I definitely like to explore all kinds. It's more like, it's probably easier to list the ones that I'm like, I'm not going to go there. Like, uh, like I'm not, I'm not very interested in checking out a Serbian film. I'm probably never going to watch Cannibal Holocaust again, but I love like the, I do love like the slow burn, like cerebral horror. Um, a lot of the times like folk horror, something like Lake Mungo really like hits the sweet spot for me. That That's so random that you just said that. <laughs> no, it really is. I, someone just uh, I just saw that on social media the other day. Our our buddies over at uh, the Guts uh, podcast they mm -hmm. they uh, shared it, and I instantly commented on it because that was part of the Eight Films to Die For series back in the day. Yeah, I and I used to love those. I used to look forward to that every year. Like, oh, what what films are going to be in the Eight Films to Die For? It was always like. I shouldn't say always. It was generally like eight mediocre films, mm -hmm. but like, and one or two of them would kind of stand out above the rest. But it just brought me back into a time where like <laughs> there were things that you would look forward to yearly, you know? And um, yeah, I think Lake Mungo was one of them. That was the found mm -hmm. footage one, correct? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of a, it's an inter interesting spin on found footage where it's like, it's sort of like a presented like a, a, a real documentary about something that happened um and it incorporates found footage into that as well and yeah. i just thought it was really clever and just the things that kind of get under your skin like that like that that's kind of similar to picnic at hanging rock which was filmed uh also also from australia so yeah um that sounds like a film i know oh yeah <laughs> dude you should check out the shepherd uh dave and i watched that recently we got to interview russell owen uh super cool guy awesome slow burn yeah. oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one was uh, really beautiful and just kind of like what you're talking about with, you know, the the cerebral stuff and just like it. Yeah, excellent film. Mm -hmm. um, I, I need to add that to my watch list. I've seen where it's I saw where you guys talked to him um, and I need to it's, I saw where it's been out on VOD. I, I should say my favorite horror movie of all time and like one of the, the best, I think, is that the original Texas Chainsaw just to kind of establish the baseline. Sure. I kind of just threw like Mungo out. Just because that was something that was off the top you of my head. Right? You heard it here first. Andrew Ford's favorite film, Lake Mungo. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Texas Chainsaw is an amazing one. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously, that's kind of one of the ones that I think most horror fans have in common as far as like their favorite films. Uh, it always surprises me when someone doesn't mention that in their list of like top 10. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. So do you have any other ones that you would throw out there as kind of your tops? Oh, do you, um, uh, hmm. I mean, I definitely, uh, a lot of it is like, what's the best one I saw recently? Uh, I know, like, um, I don't know. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. I did watch, uh, uh, Alfred Hitchcock's shadow of a doubt last night, which is kind of, you know, horror movie, uh, you know, kind of, but it's like, it really got under my skin this time because I feel like they're, they're digging into something with the subtext that most, most people probably didn't pick up on at the time with like like um uh on, like with the because about i don't know if you guys have seen it uh recently or or it's, um, yeah. it's uh, joseph cotton plays uncle charlie who's kind of he's on the run from something we don't know what and he goes home to his family and his niece is just over the moon she loves him and uh you start to gradually realize like you kind of get their relationship is like a little too uh uh close sometimes it's a little like uh unnerving and then it's presented um 
it, it's not presented outright as like there's maybe a hint of abuse because they wouldn't do that in a movie at the time but like the, now you see it in the subtext is so clear it's like oh man that's really 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 dark and bleak and just really i don't know it's probably like a really it, it reminded me of um i feel like blue velvet would have like melted hitchcock's brain uh -huh. like that's the kind of movie that shadow of a doubt is like that's the kind of like suburbia is right here here's yeah. the ear in the grass you know yeah. <laughs> with ants crawling on it you know yeah um so i really i highly recommend that one as well you know i gotta i gotta go revisit that one so i love that idea of like the safe suburbia but then like just outside is the danger that mm -hmm. perceived danger but it kind of starts to trickle in and <laughs> i i do i do love that blue velvet's one of my favorite all-time films and i always you know people kind of question david whether david lynch should be considered horror i kind of consider him horror because mm -hmm. he scares the shit out of me <laughs> you know his, his films really oh good. yeah yeah, the, the scariest stuff I've seen on in stuff in anything is like Bob crawling over the couch in Twin Peaks yeah, yeah. or like Laura Dern's smile in Inland Empire, like or Mulholland Drive, the most probably famous one, which uh, the, the the dude behind the, the the dumpster. I mean, all that stuff just oh, like yeah. completely shattered. Me. Like, I was just like, I got to stop. <laughs> like, what's going on? Lost you, don't, you don't feel safe. Yeah. Lost Highway. Yes. The, the uh, opening scene, and I've, I've talked about this before on here, mm -hmm. but like the opening scene where he's he's getting video, VHS tapes and he puts them in and it's actually someone filming him sleeping and like walking into his house <laughs> gave me chills. But then the scene where they're at the party and that really creepy dude, it, like he calls him and, and then like some, he calls his house, he makes him call his house and he's like, I'm in your house. Oh, oh those are terrifying. <laughs> That is some of the stuff that just gets under the skin and stays there for yes, sure. <laughs> 100 percent. Um, so Andrew, let's let's transition to your film, The Reenactment, uh, which we've actually previously discussed on this podcast back in January when we had Tony Todd as a guest. Um, mm -hmm. so could you give our listeners a synopsis of what this film is about for those who didn't listen to that episode? And also, if you are a listener who didn't, you check out the Tony Todd interview. Shame on you. <laughs> yeah that was a, that was an incredible interview with him by the way that that was kind of the first time when, when you like i think ben and um and derek maybe maybe talked to you guys about about the movie and or i don't know how that worked out but it was it was incredible to hear it i was like i woke up one day and there was the interview i was like oh wow this is awesome <laughs> um but yeah uh the reenactment is about a um an unsolved mystery the crew of an unsolved mysteries type show in the mid 90s uh, they go to a house to film the reenactments and uh, they find out that maybe uh, the crime that they're filming the reenactments for isn't uh, it, it's still it's still going on. Uh, <laughs> and um, yeah, that's 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 a very rough synopsis of it. Um, yeah, sorry, if I seem distracted, it's because my dog has decided to just make all the noise. I hope it's coming <laughs> yeah, through. I, I was going <laughs> to yell at Josh for those noises. <laughs> those are just funny. <laughs> He's like he's like rolling on the couch now, like attacking a toy. I don't know. He, he's just on one right now. And I guess this is time of day where he just goes nuts. So I took, it, I took him for a walk. I don't know. What's his problem? <laughs> he heard my voice and now he's antsy. I have that effect. Josh um, makes dogs go in heat. Oh, no. <laughs> Mookie pillows. Uh, so here's something you may not know when, and I don't think I told you, when Tony Todd, um, somehow we got hooked up with Tony Todd, he actually wanted to come on and talk specifically about his new film, The Reenactment, because he was so proud of his role on that film. Um, oh, wow. And we were like, <laughs> well, absolutely. And that's how we ended up getting the screener. So how, how does it feel that Tony Todd uh, wanted to recommend your movie? I mean, it's, it's incredible. It's, a, it's, uh, he was incredible to work with. It, it was, a uh, I think like most people in my position, you know, it's the first time feature filmmaker, uh, it's a little daunting to have someone of that stature just walk into the room and it's like, Oh, there he is. Um, like literal and, you know, metaphorical, like he's a very tall man as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, that, that means the world. I, I, I thought he did a phenomenal job and I know when, um, when we uh, finished shooting with him, uh, he had, he had talked to me about, uh, he was like, I want to, you know, if you could use some, like he want, he was telling me like, I want, like, I want you to use some of the stuff where I kind of like lose it. Or I kind of like, I'm like, Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> but there was a, uh, there was stuff that was scripted and there was stuff that a lot of the time it would just be, let's let him go and see where he goes. And, sure. and he, you know, he's in it the whole time. And so um, it was really, is, you know, I learned 
I've said this, I, I, I don't, I, I might've mentioned it um, on another podcast before, but I, I definitely learned uh, as much during the time, that, like the one day that he was there, like one and a half days that he was shooting as I learned the rest of the shoot, just about acting, directing actors, dealing with actors, folding someone into a group that's already working well together. I mean, it's a crash course in, in, uh, in filmmaking. And it, it was, uh, it was an honor and, you know, I'm just grateful that he, he, uh, he took a chance on me and, and on, on our, our crew and our team. And, um, yeah, um, that, but that's awesome. I'm glad, I'm glad that he was, that he reached out about it. <laughs> we had a, uh, another, um, interesting experience with someone that was kind of in the same position, uh, the cast of Sin Eater, they were able to get Bill Mosley in their film. Oh, and, man. you know, it was interesting, like thinking about what that must be like being, you know, sort of maybe not a first time, but like, you know, you haven't had a breakout film. You're still very much working in like the underground indie circuit. And all of a sudden you get this like horror genre icon in your film. That, I, how nerve wracking is that? Um, I mean, at that, it, it, it kind of worked out in a good way and a bad way because his, uh, Tony's uh, shoot days were at the end of the shoot. So I was probably too tired to be nervous at that point. Sure. <laughs> um, I mean, you just kind of put it out. It, I mean, the whole thing is nerve wracking to a certain extent. And for me, the way I kind of deal with things like that is I just, you know, I don't, I don't, you can either sit and analyze and analyze and analyze and not get anything done or you just, but ultimately the train's moving. You just have to go. And so I was kind of just like, well, it's, I have, I know what I want to do. I know where I can go, you know, to, if I need to change something in the approach and I, you know, I'll just, just do the best I can. And, you know, if I don't, you know, so yeah, it's, it's definitely, you know, uh, when we were casting, that was also nerve wracking because it was and frustrating because, you know, you, you, you don't hear back from people sometimes or you don't, um, and you don't know why <laughs> Yeah. or, uh, or, you know, and, and then by the, by the time you do like our, uh, the actor who played, um, uh, Kevin uh, is an actor named Stephen Green. He was our he he was our number one, and he didn't he just his agent just didn't get back to us for a while. I think he has a new agent now, but <laughs> he uh, and then finally like a week like maybe two weeks before we were gonna go, we, we were we we're gonna send it off to someone else like who wasn't our first choice. And before we could even send it, he like he was like, oh I didn't I didn't know like I'm in I'm in like you know and he did great. So it's it's one of those things where the whole process is kind of like. Um, you can't there's you can't you can't take anything too personally but also you kind of uh have to it's hard because you're like so fully invested in it so it's like a balancing act i guess <laughs> it's, i mean stephen green doesn't even need an agent yeah he like interacts no. <laughs> on social media and stuff yeah. like that he promotes himself he doesn't really need anybody promoting him he's oh, been more sure. interactive like um you know when we were first kind of promoting the interview and the movie itself he was all over the place on that stuff, retweeting, you know, commenting mm -hmm. back, you know, he was, I think he, at least he said he listened to the episode and everything. It was like, just loved hearing Tony Todd talking about the film in such a great way. So mm -hmm. I mean, that, that guy's all over the place. I really like that. Um, oh yeah, no, he's, he's got a ton of, ton of positive energy. He's like yeah. real, really like about it. Yeah. I wish I had that energy for social media. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you and I both buddy, you and I both. Uh, so here, here's a, odd question there was a lot of different footage like you had the the crew footage then you had the onset footage then you had the found footage and mm -hmm. i was there was it seemed like there was a lot of different cameras used and i was just curious um was was each separate shot done with a different camera or was it the same camera just different style i, I don't know if that makes any sense yeah, no, it does. Um, yeah, so we shot uh, like the main movie basically on a um, Arri Alexa Mini, um, which was our which is our primary camera, which is like you know four uh, K or I think it was two K because we were shooting anamorphic, um, and then um, uh, so that was our main camera, and then we had uh, additional footage that we shot on uh, some of the VHS footage or some of the footage is supposed to look like it's a homemade video camera that was shot on a VHS-C camera called a Quasar. Um, and we also shot some on a Canon XL2 that a friend of ours had had since we were in college together. Um, he just still had it and it still worked miraculously. So we just used that. Um, and I believe we also picked up, uh, there, there's probably some other video camera, like the digital video camera work done in there. But the, the fun part for me was the, um, the home movies 
of the uh like the, the little uh the film reels that play like the super eight film those were all actual home movies of the house that we shot in from like the 50s or 60s or whenever that were actually shot on super eight millimeter and transferred to dvd and so uh the owner of the house who uh his uh daughter uh, rachel was our production designer she got the footage and just like gave us a dvd and we we're like this is incredible this is better than <laughs> this is an incredible production value we have a time machine you know <laughs> like we have to use all of this so we i mean we didn't use all of it but we used a lot of it and uh it's a uh, it's really cool they had said at one point um the, the guy who owned the house it was his it was his family you know and, and uh an extended family and he had said like well there's one person's face we don't want to see and i was like I don't know who that is because everybody's out of focus. So I don't <laughs> like the, the uh, super eight footage is never in focus. So I have no idea. Yeah. And I haven't, you know, uh, I I'm assuming that, um, I know she's seen the movie and she was fine with it. His, his, uh, his daughter was uh, okay with it. So I'm assuming that he didn't have any issues if he's seen it. I don't know. Sure. Uh, so let me ask you, I'm, ass- I'm going to assume you are, but are you a found footage fan? Yes. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it depends like a bad found footage, found footage movie is the worst thing in the world but most of them are at least pretty good like but i'll find something in most of them <laughs> okay so i i actually really really enjoy found footage i think it goes back to my experience watching blair witch in the theater and just that feeling i got from it and just you know i just loved that realistic like it was easy for me to kind of put myself into it and kind of pretend in my mind that it was real for that t- that period of time. And ever since then, I've kind of followed found footage films. And I guess it's like a guilty pleasure because I know a lot of, some people don't like them. Uh, other than Lake Mungo, what would you say are some of your favorites? Um, I, lo- I really liked, um, I mean, it's a more, one of the more like uh, uh, big studio ones, but I thought As Above, So Below was really well done. Yeah. Um, I'm always impressed when there's a found footage movie that I don't question why they're filming either because they, they justify it or I'm too, I'm too preoccupied to think about it. Um, I really, I like the hell house LLC movies. They're pretty fun that yeah. they're not like amazing. I don't think as movies necessarily, but they really get, they really creep me out in a really good way. So they're like really effective. Um, and like gone jam haunted asylum was one I watched last Halloween that kind of creeped me out. I'm trying to think of the, have you seen the houses October built? Yes. Those are fun. Yeah. I like the, the, the cause those are kind of the, when I remember when the first one came out, I wasn't sure how much of it was just a straight documentary. Yeah. Um, which was a nice, a nice tension to have there. Yeah. I think that's, <laughs> I, I agree. Like when, when you don't question things and it just feels like it makes sense somehow, it's, it's a great feeling uh, just to kind of be able to sit back and not sit there and be like annoyed. Like, why would you still be holding a camera at this, <laughs> at this moment? Or, or, or when they have like Cloverfield, loved Cloverfield, but the, you know, who is it that's holding the camera the whole time? Uh, oh, uh, TJ Miller. Yeah. Cause he is so <laughs> annoying in that film. Uh, although I just love the visual, the visuals of the monsters in that film. I thought they did a really good job at the time. At least I haven't watched Cloverfield in forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The um. Uh. There's another movie um called The Borderlands. Um. I don't know. Have you seen that one? Yes. Yeah. Because that's one of the movies that ha- like it does what only found footage can do, where it has a scene where it's able to, it's able to like just. Uh. It, I don't want to spoil it because I don't think a lot of people have seen it, but it's it's when someone goes down into a tunnel at the end, yeah. and there's a reveal in the tunnel, and it's it's one of the most horrifying like reveals I've ever seen in a movie. I thought it was so effectively done. You know, you know what year that came out? Um, I want to say 2013, maybe. Uh, okay. There was another one been... that was part of that eight films to die for thing that I referenced earlier. I think it was, yeah. <laughs> I think it was in there as well. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> wow. That um, eight films to die for is uh catching on like fire today. I'm telling you, man, I'm gonna bring it back. We gotta, yeah, we gotta bring, I, it back. bring it back. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's day, but it's worth a try. Uh, as long as the check clears let's see i hope they, they paid me good money for this yeah. <laughs> uh mothers of monsters was pretty good too that was oh uh, yeah, yeah yeah that was a that was a good one did you have really you seen good. that andrew was it it's called mothers of monsters yeah yeah i, I haven't seen that one no is that was it recent uh, i think it came out what 20 20 20 2020 right at the start of the pandemic yeah okay I will add that. That sounds. What's what? Uh, what's that one about? I haven't. Uh, I haven't heard of that one. It's basically a mom thinks her son's going to do like a school shooting. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. 
It very and, yeah okay that's a good idea <laughs> it's, a, it's a very interesting film and uh it keeps you thinking and guessing absolutely oh um, awesome so and if you watch uh the film there's bloopers on youtube that are pretty funny too <laughs> not out there uh, that's what that's what we need yeah we need to do uh, i mean we have a uh little behind the scenes clip for the reenactment but and i guess it has some bloopers in it but not we don't have like a really good blooper reel of just bloopers <laughs> the uh so back to your film um we so james storm was in it and i'm a huge james storm fan um how is it working with james storm uh james is awesome um james is uh, he's just a great guy i mean whatever you like would hope he would be you know uh, that's who he is like uh he's just real down to earth like happy to do whatever uh really brings like again like sort of like steven and, and like a lot of people on the set like great energy all the time pretty much which was very helpful on days where i would I, I and some other people were a little burnt out um and uh yeah he's uh he got it right away um i remember the first time i met with him um to talk about taking the part uh we talked about the, t- the original text chance i'm asker he was like oh that's my favorite movie i was like okay good <laughs> and uh from there we went into like i told him like you know you're going to be wearing like a gas mask um uh because that's the design for the killer the whole time he's like oh yeah it's all in the eyes like totally and i was like oh okay cool i thought that would be a problem like you know i i i don't know how like i feel like most people might raise a question i mean tom hardy wouldn't care but you know most people might be like i don't want to wear a mask the whole time i want people to see my face but uh yeah he he got it he loves horror uh he's really smart about it he recommended i'll tell you one of the best uh days on the shoot I would because I would again this is probably a running thing like I was just at my wits end trying to get out of this one room we were shooting in and I was shooting a fight scene and I had it all planned out and I was trying and then uh he had brought these glass bottles that he wanted to that are breakaway um and I because I wasn't in the script or anything and he was like what if I had these and I was like all right well, I gotta establish where these came from <laughs> but okay let, let's figure this out and then I'm just trying to figure out how to piece it together but then he comes at me like I'm doing that. And I'm like, okay, we need this shot, this shot, and this shot. I, I come back from talking with our DP about that, about the setups and the, and the AD and like the team to kind of plan it out. I come back into the room and he's like, so I worked out this whole thing with uh, Steven and I'm going to throw him into the wall and then he's going to hop up and I'm going to kick him back. And I'm like, all right, let's just shoot it. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> like, I was like, <laughs> I was like, I don't have time. To, I, I, I'm, and it was the best thing I could have done. Cause it was, you know, not that I would have argued at that point, but I was just like, yes, like I, he's giving this. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. You know? So he's a, He's a team player. He works his ass off. He's great. If, That's awesome to hear. If uh, someone that was <laughs> listening didn't know who James Storm was, what would you tell them? And um, it's not me. It's somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. I'm assuming James, a wrestler because Josh likes him. Yeah, he's a professional wrestler. He's part of the 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 beer money tag team. Um, uh, I'm trying to think what. <laughs> They like beer money. <laughs> Cause I, I, to be honest, uh, uh, the co-writer, um, Eli was more familiar with him from wrestling than I was. Um, cause I, I, I followed wrestling when I was younger and then I've only kind of recently gotten back into like AEW and WWE a little bit. Um, and so it was interesting cause he's all, he's all been more like TNA, um, and outside, you know, the, the other organizations that aren't, don't have cable, big cable deals, I guess. Um, and so, uh, it was interesting to, to, I don't know. Yeah, I guess. It, well, but personally, if I was going to say like, hey, you should check out this movie he's in, then you'll know everything about him. It's called The Reenactment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now you can use that reference. Yeah, That's now great. I've got that one. Um, but no, there was a really, uh, actually, it was, it was on, uh, I forget, it was for some kind of wrestling promotion. And um, uh, it, it, he just, it, someone posted about it on Twitter. I don't even think he posted about it necessarily, but there were like, there was this kid who was waiting for autographs and the wrestlers weren't signing or the wrestlers a couple of wrestlers walked by him or something or like he had been waiting the whole time or whatever. And like, maybe they went out the other door, they didn't see him, but James came over and spent a ton of time with him. And like, you know, he's just a, a really good dude. Like, nice. yeah, that was uh there's a million stories. Like that's one of like a half dozen at least that I've seen come across like social media and stuff, sure. you know, um, of just him being like a great dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's nice. I'm going to completely throw a monkey wrench in this interview. And uh, I alluded to it in the beginning. Would you like to talk about your time on Curse of the Weird Deer? I was uh, I was not on Curse of the Weird Deer very long, but I'm happy to talk about it. <laughs> oh, dude, absolutely. That that day was uh, 
well, every day was fucking bad. <laughs> right? Every day. Uh, you were only there for one, but. Uh, mm-hmm. For like, like half of one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you had a really cool scene. So. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was there. There was a scene in the jail with. Um, God, I'm, I, don't, uh, I know um, Bert was in the jail cell with Eli. Eli got all dressed up. Eli is is a uh, for for listeners. Eli uh, plays uh, God. Well, I can't remember the character name now. He's in the reenactment. <laughs> he gets thrown through a wall. <laughs> and he um, he got to he also co wrote the movie with me. Um, and he, uh, he in in the end, Chris is worried here. I don't know if like I I see. Here's the thing. I took like photos of him because I thought it was funny. And he was like, "Don't send those to me." <laughs> and he's like don't send those to other people and i'm like you did this in a movie <laughs> <laughs> you realize that, right? <laughs> but uh he, he, was, yeah, he, he was not very comfortable no he was not no he uh i was like oh why don't you do this and he was like dude i'm so uncomfortable i don't even want to <laughs> move i was like fair enough, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> yeah I, th- I think if he it's not why I didn't show up early early when he did but i i suspected something like that might happen <laughs> um yeah. No, I, uh, uh, I, it definitely looked like a good time. I wish I'd been able to, like, Austin had a fun part. Uh, Austin Newton, who, uh, was the second AD on the reenactment, he also came and helped out him and Josh Canalti. Um, dude, uh, awesome, and dudes. Out. awesome dudes hung out. Oh, dude, time they were there. I yeah, was teaching the... Austin how to lift weights to not like <laughs> exert himself, and uh, he's like, What do I do? And I was, yeah, <laughs> it was pretty interesting. But if you watch the scene, he's doing basically just this. And he's not mm-hmm. really moving, but he's his arm's so long that it, it, it looks like <laughs> you know pumping iron. But he had to do that for like literally, uh, what like two hours. You know what I mean? Or however yeah, we, long you guys were in that mm-hmm. tiny corner. Yeah, they just kept yeah. kept doing takes of it. And he, um, I know that they wanted him to raise it over his head, but he had an issue where his shoulder pops out sometimes. So, yeah. but I, and he didn't like because he did, I didn't know that until he came over after and was talking to me and Josh about it. I was like, oh, okay. Which is funny because I have the same problem, and uh, <laughs> when we and that's that's why I, we started talking about different things to do. Mm-hmm. So and I fit that I thought that fit the jail, and uh, mm-hmm. Ben was like, ah, so whatever. Yeah, so, good. Yeah, he, uh, he. I have like a side by side photo. I don't know if it got sent to you or, or you might have made it and sent it to somebody, and then I got it. But it was of him side by side with uh, Nicholas Cage from Con Air. Uh, <laughs> dude please send that to me i'll send that to you after this <laughs> uh, hey, did, has he seen it he's seen it yeah yeah he's he's got it he we were sending it, we uh the weekend or yeah the week after we all had to go our friend uh jeremiah who was also his first ad on the reenactment he uh he and his uh fiance had a tandem bachelor bachelorette party weekend so we went out of town for that and that we were just sending photos to each other the whole time just taking random like, photos of each other uh, and that was one that got worked into the rotation. <laughs> All of a sudden, we just get this photo of like Nicolas Cage and Austin dressed as a prisoner. So that was fun. <laughs> so yeah, where Deer's going to be special? That just from what I saw, that was it. Was, it's it, it's a good bunch of people, and it, it looks like a fun time. <laughs> yeah. So I haven't done the. I'm doing a behind the scenes episode with the guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, I haven't really revealed a lot of stuff um, <laughs> to them or anybody else, really. Uh, I posted a few pictures on Facebook, but a lot of them I haven't. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't wait to do that because the story from like even not even getting there, just the the day before I got there, the story from then to the time I left, completely insane. Uh, <laughs> somebody has to document that, you know. <laughs> and I I didn't get a lot of behind the scenes footage that I wanted to get, mm-hmm. uh, and I know. Um, the other Kevin, Dusty Kevin, was doing it too, but uh, he was just doing goofy stuff. I was trying to record as much as possible, you know. Um, mm-hmm. Aside from nudity, I didn't get anybody naked, not on purpose. Anyway, <laughs> I tried to steer clear of that. But yeah, anyway. yeah. I think I think there was there was one day where like uh, Ben was like, um, like you should come out to set, and I was like, oh, it's gonna be a bunch of extras or something. And I think it, I think it was one of the crazier. It, it, it was a bunch of extras day, but it was also like, there was a lot going, uh, a lot of, um, that was a day with a lot of nudity and effects. I think it was at the beginning of that week that I was there at the end of, and I was like, Oh, I literally can't today, but you know, thank you for the <laughs> reminder, um, to, to come out. Cause I wanted to help out more. I just, I, I've been caught up helping out with a, uh, 
uh, are the DP of the movie of the reenactment, Josh Hick, as he and I and, and Eli and some other people are putting together a, a very, very low to no budget independent film right now that we're, you know, it's, Ooh. it's coordinating with, with uh, people and, you know, a lot of moving parts. I'm, I'm basically the schedule person. So it's, that's the fun part of the job. Can, can you share <laughs> anything about that film or is it still kind of under wraps? Um, it is a crime. It's a, it's kind of a crime movie. Um, it's, um, it's called depth of field. I can say that the title might change. I don't know, but that's what it's called for now. Um, and it's, it's something that Josh has been working on for years and I've, I've been through, um, yeah, he and I alone have been through like maybe 10 or 12 different drafts over the, over that time, if not more. And he, it's changed completely several times. So, um, we'll see, you know, how, uh, how the rest of this plays out. But so far, you know, we're, we got a good chunk of it done and we're, we should be able to wrap it up before it starts, uh, before it gets too hot outside. <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. He's, is, is this the documentary they're also with Austin? Or is that something? No, no. So, uh, yeah. So Austin and, and Josh, I think they're almost done with that documentary. And then, uh, oh yeah, we, have, we uh, talked about that extensively mm -hmm. there. Um, I learned a little bit more about that on the, um, uh, on the trip. I don't know what's out about that either, but, um, that sounds really, really interesting. Uh, and it's total, like, like just random, you know, <laughs> of course this, you know, let, let's find this story just kind of falls in their laps a little bit to a certain extent. I'm like, Oh wow, this is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um, I can't wait. I uh, we have a, a guy here that does documentaries who agreed to help them. Um, so they, once they're actually done, uh, we're gonna I'm gonna pass them along to that guy and hook them up so they can at least have an idea of how to get it out and stuff like that. So, oh, awesome. Hopefully, hopefully. yeah, you know, cool guys, awesome guys. Yeah. So uh, and, and they told me. Uh, so I worked with Josh and Austin the whole time they were there. And mm -hmm. the two of them, they were like, so on the set of the reenactment was 10 times worse than any trauma movie, including Curse of the Weird Deer. Is that true? They said it was worse? <laughs> yeah, they said it was complete craziness. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't want to compare and contrast I, I, uh, what it was like. The atmosphere was maybe tense sometimes. I don't know in terms of um, just how many moving parts there were and how much was going on. And we had a larger crew um, because, uh, well, it, you know, we just ended up with the larger crew over the course of, you know, things came up. I'm, we just, I'm totally you know. kidding. They, they never said that at all. <laughs> I'm like, I totally put you I don't know. I'm like, they wouldn't say that, would they? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, well, I, 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 I'm taking I'm you at your. I'm, I'm taking you at your word here. Maybe I shouldn't have done. Maybe I should listen to more episodes of the podcast before this. <laughs> Classic mistake. No. <laughs> uh, I just, I just wanted to throw that out there. No, Josh, Josh and Austin, man, they, um, they were super cool dudes. And uh, <laughs> once I found out that we, they were on the reenactment, um, we we talked about it for like two hours straight. Uh, it was really interesting, and it was really cool to get like behind the scenes on that film as well. So it was, yeah. it was awesome. They're super nice guys. Like you couldn't have picked a better cast uh, and, and fucking workers, man. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, those guys guys yeah they... And Josh yeah. and Austin, man, they just jumped right in and they were just, you know, all of us really did, but uh, them two, especially uh, man, they just, they, what, what do you need us for? Hey, this isn't getting done. Let's, let's jump right in. And mm -hmm. uh, man, they just, super cool and without them that movie probably wouldn't have got made in the last week let me tell you um <laughs> first of the weird year i'm talking about mm -hmm. so no, I, yeah they I, had nothing but nice things to say about the reenactment <laughs> i'm totally kidding so uh, well i will say um uh there was uh towards the end of maybe the first week or something without saying a word josh just starts passing around red solo cups and then he pulls out a bottle of like i think it was crown royal and he starts pouring little <laughs> And like we're all just sitting around we're all exhausted we're talking to the next day and i'm like okay yeah all right <laughs> he, he, he didn't say a word didn't didn't need to ask just everybody needs this i was like all right yeah so he he's a yeah they're, they're great dudes so <laughs> when, when you were done filming was the uh was the after film party all it was cracked up to be uh what i can remember yeah uh <laughs> that was one where um we went we literally wrapped filming and went straight out um uh to a bar down in downtown nashville with karaoke uh it was actually Jay, one of james's friends that uh, that owned it or own 
I, I, you might still own it um, downtown. And it was, uh, yeah, it was pretty, we were out until about 5 a.m. And I remember um, the night ended with, uh, it was me and there were a couple of guys who were on the camera crew that were staying with me. <laughs> and uh, I was started joking, like whenever uh, one of them would open his mouth to say something while on the ride back, I just, I just would turn and joke. I was joking and I would just be like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> And then by the end of it, the Uber driver was telling him to shut the fuck up, too. <laughs> it's, like, that's it's like, that's that's going to get you a good tip, buddy. <laughs> that's awesome. So, and that was what, like 5.30 in the morning? Yeah, that, and then we had to get up the next day and clean out the house a little more because uh, people were moving in. That's another oh, story no. for another time. Yeah. That was, I don't think I've ever been working that and felt that bad. <laughs> do the the next day cleanup uh two of us made it out i think it was me and josh and oh we wow went to the housing and cleaned up and it was literally just us uh and ben's wife showed up and jen's like what are you guys doing we're like <laughs> we were the only ones that survived last night so we're we're just cleaning up the house <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that guy could put him away he's a good guy mm-hmm. um yeah man uh so, so you you know Andrew, you already kind of alluded to your next project. Is there anything else that you want people to know to kind of keep an eye out for? Or do you want to also let people know where to find you on social media? Um, yeah. Um, so I'm on Twitter um, at A48, um, A-F-O-R-D-88. And then um, on uh, Instagram at uh, Mead Ford, M-E-A-D Ford. Um, and other than that, uh, let's see. The reenactment available on all digital platforms everywhere. Uh, we haven't, uh, as far as I know, we're not streaming anywhere yet on like a streamer, but um, hopefully soon. Um, I think I know that's next up in the in the you know pattern of uh, distribution. Yeah. And then um, I also wrote a book about Clint Eastwood that's on Amazon Prime. It's called The Clint Eastwood Reader. If anyone wants to read it, uh, uh, please buy the Kindle copy. Do not buy a physical copy because even though the because the physical copy costs almost three times as much. And I get less money out of it. So okay. <laughs> I don't know how that works, but that's Amazon for you. Um, and then um, Eli and Josh and I started a podcast recently called Stagecoach Justice, where we talk about Westerns. Um, and the first three episodes are out now, uh, or maybe more by the time this comes out. And then uh, we right now we're doing the films of Anthony Mann and Jimmy Stewart. Uh, so that's been awesome because those movies are great and fun to talk about. Cool. And uh, yeah, um, Depth of Field's coming hopefully soon. And then I have another script that's hopefully uh, on the way to pre-production soon. So a uh, lot of, lot of irons in the fire for sure. Busy man, busy man. <laughs> cool, man. Hey, uh, Andrew, thank you so much for coming on, man. Uh, such a, such a privilege, like super cool meeting you in the flesh, so to speak. Um, <laughs> I, I was asking uh, like, Everyone was like, oh, yeah, this guy, the guy from the reenactments coming. I'm like, yeah, when? Because they said that for like three days and I didn't see it. And then when they showed up, Josh was like, I'm going to introduce you. And I'm like, oh, thanks, man. And uh, so it was super cool to meet you. I'm so glad we got you on. Um, and it's funny how it works. You know, we get Tony Todd talking about it and then we get the director, you know, six months later. So super cool to have you. Thanks, man. Yeah, no, thank uh, Dave, Josh, thank you so much for having me. Uh, give give Brandon my best. Um, thank you. And um, no, I, I really appreciate this. And and uh, yeah, thank you guys again. This is awesome. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, everybody, you heard it here first. Check out the reenactment. Well, not first because it's been out for a little while now. But <laughs> check out the reenactment if you haven't already. Check out Andrew's podcast if you guys are fans of westerns. That's really cool. And yeah, again, like I like I say about most of our up and coming film directors, I always I get this like sense that I feel like there's more to come. And Andrew, I, I definitely feel like we're gonna be probably following your career for a little while now. So thank you for uh, stopping on on this podcast along the way. Oh, of course, thank you. Yeah, seriously, thank you for having me. This is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, and everybody have a great night. Pretty. All of you are very pretty.